This video is brought to you by DPA Open Mind, where I just did a seven hours chit chat session with yeah, everyone. Whoa. So we even talk about Ukraine war, so do check it out. So, uh, hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia, and uh, this is the situation report or summary for the day of 795 for the 28th of April. Uh, that is some terrible transition. So, uh, yeah, do check out the DP Open Mind. We talked almost like six hours worth of Ukraine war. Yeah. Yeah, that is just that much thing to talk about. So we're going to start off with some frontline changes report. So I already published the frontline changes, but there is still more frontline changes uh, over at the DFK front. And uh, so at the DFK front, uh, at the Cheritine so Solovyove uh, region, the Russian forces have expanded their control based on... Uh, uh, Russian reports. There is actually a geolocation that actually verifies and uh, corroborates this information uh, of this expansion of the Russian control over this area here. So this direction means that the Russian forces are continuing towards Sokil. So this is uh, one of them. The other one is actually just as significant over at the Donetsk front at Krasnohorivka. There is a geolocation of Russian forces attacking from the eastern part of Krasnohorivka, and which means that my prediction is coming true or actually not really coming true. Uh, the Russian forces are now pushing from the east. And uh, this is after the Russians are already pushing from the south. As I mentioned before, the Russian forces like to attack from multiple angles against a settlement uh, based on the past half a year's uh, way of fighting so this comes as a interesting surprise because they are going through heavily defended or uh, heavily you know, entrenched regions and they are coming from the north the russians are coming so anyway uh yeah the russians are coming so we're going to start off uh, we are going to continue over to the strategy and tactical reporting the first thing first was russian uh strikes on the uh, ukrainian airfields there's one strike over at the Dnipro airport. Uh, according to the Russian Defense Ministry, they hit the Kamenka air base, or, at, or basically the Dnipro airport. So there's one hit over there. And there's another two more hits over at this uh, Kamen Kamenitsky region. One is over at the Staro Konstantinov uh, air base, uh, which is this one. One strike over here. Uh, information, uh, they say that is. They hit some aircraft and aircraft munition in the hangars. Another one is just nearby over at, uh, just near the capital of Kamenitsky. Uh, this one, the, they call it the Priluki. Why is it called Priluki? Mm, I'm not sure why is it called Priluki. Anyway, uh, or maybe I got the wrong place. Priluki. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's something in the area got hit. Anyway, it got hit. So uh, aircraft and munition supposedly got destroyed. Uh, so that's, it for this uh reports not very important in my opinion what is this okay so we go into the Kherson front over the Kherson front uh the ukrainian uh mapping deep state ua claimed that the ukrainian forces have captured this island and uh, this island is very pointless to talk about because i never thought that it is challenged let me turn off my steam give me a while so uh so this island was never really contested so i'm not sure yeah, I, I think it's just a cope. I like this. Oh, we have captured this island. You know, then hopefully that you will forget about everything happening at Krasnohorivka, Bakhmut, uh, Edievka, uh, uh, Kup Kupian's front, you know, Kermina front, Svetove front. Yeah, but they co conquered a, a inhabited island in uh, Kherson. So I think that's what happened. Uh, over at the, They're still fighting reporter at Krinky. Again, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry on the 28th of April, uh, there is shelling reported over at uh, Ohilka, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. So yeah, this is what happened over here. If we zoom out a bit, we're going to see uh, one more near uh, the north of Akanelske over at Ivanivka. There is some shelling reported around here. Uh, so very far away. So that's about it. We move into the uh, Zaporizhia front. Over at the Zaporizhia front, uh, we have uh, multiple reports of things happening around here. Let me see. No, okay, there's nothing over on the eastern part. On the western part of the uh, Zaporizhia front, there is some fighting reporter at Kayamske over at Robotine 
and as well as Luhivsky. There is a Charlene reporter at Pri Obrazianka uh, over here at Stepnokhurs, and uh, this one is at Pelivka. So uh, the, just to note, note that uh, there is Russian uh, reports from today. So usually it's always we talk about the one yes, the day before, but we happen to have, uh, because I did this recording so late, the today's report came out so i just talked about today's report as well so this is a combination of two days report so this is a situation over at the zaporizhia front there's nothing really significant to talk about we move into the donets front so at the donets front uh the general picture continues to be largely similar uh we're gonna have fighting report as uh staro uh why is this forgot uh staro mayoske uru zaine uh over at vodian over at novo mihailivka at georgivka and krasnohorivka so this is the strategic situation over at this region here um going to the details we have over at uh, uru zaine the russians continue to push ukrainian forces counter attack russian forces attacking at staro mayoske as well there's a multiple dual location uh air strikes I think these are all airstrikes. So no, one airstrike, this is the attack on the M113. And uh, this one is an airstrike. So Russian forces uh, airstrike, uh, start of Moscow, and Uruzaini, and then there's another M113 destroyed over here. We move on. Am I talking too fast? <sighs> Slow down. Okay. Chill. Let's move on to another, another gear. And at Voleda, there is uh, some shelling reported at Voleda itself, geolocated. Ukrainian forces uh, is geolocated over at this location, getting hit by FPV drone. So uh, basically, this is north of Volodymyrivka. So uh, nothing significant, pretty predictable. Mm -hmm. uh, there's fighting reported at Vodian uh, from the 28th to the 29th, according to the Russian and Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Most likely, it's coming from the east. And... Uh, we move on further up north over at Novo Mihailivka. There is fighting reporter around this area here. However, uh, the most significant news is Deep State UA, the pro Ukrainian source, acknowledging the capture of Novo Mihailivka. The, the initial uh, reports of capture by the Russian Defense Ministry was on the 22nd. It took around a week for the Russians to capture the, the rest of this uh, Dacha region. So this took one week and uh, then with this capture, the Ukrainian side acknowledged the capture of the entirety of Novo Mihailivka. So that's all for this area. We move further up north. Nothing much to talk about at the Georgivka. Over at Krasnohorivka, as mentioned in the Frontline Changes report, the Russian forces is now attacking from the east as well as Joe located. Uh, that they are you know, taking certain trench and uh, there is not much heavy trenches now. So they're going to go into the settlement pretty soon. Uh, in this direction, Russian forces are pushing uh, towards the western part, or oh, sorry, eastern part of Krasnohorivka. They are attacking the central part. There is multiple, uh, a multiple geolocation location of uh, bombardments by the Russians all over the place. So, yeah, the fighting is very intense at Battle of Krasnohorivka. The battle will continue. We will continue to monitor this. And that's all for the Donetsk front. We move into the ADFK front. ADFK front is full of icons. You can see it's, it's starting to look like they caught chicken pox. So, uh, so the chicken pox continue uh, to, with the Russian forces attacking at Netolove, Ukrainian forces counter attack. There is Charling reported at Zakine. There is Russian fighting at Umanske. Uh, fighting reported at Sahievka. And western part of Sehievka, Ukrainian forces counter attack at Sehievka, Ukrainian forces counter attack at Badaichi, Russia attack at Novoporovsky, at Novo Selika Persia, uh, at Novo Bakhmutivka, Ukrainian forces counter, counter attack at Novo Bakhmutivka, fighting reported near Sokyu, uh, Ocheritine, counter attacking at Ocheritine, fighting to, towards uh, Novo Alexandrivka, fighting reported towards Okanhelsky at the uh, Novo Kalinove at Karamik and one more I can't read it. Uh, what is it? Uh, Kalinove. So and there's something further up north. Uh, I'll talk about it later. So this is the strategic picture. It looks ridiculous because there is so many overlapping arrows and uh, some of the arrows is behind the Ukrainian arrows. It makes zero sense. Uh, this just shows how complicated the situation right now. I think even uh some of these uh, commands may not actually fully know what is ha happening. So we have some uh, very weird reporting. So so we will uh, go into details. Uh, so we go into the Netolove region. The significant is the geolocation of Russian forces in the almost the center of Netolove, which means the Russian forces have quietly 
storm into Netolove as we are all focusing on the things happening in the north. Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking, trying to stop the Russian forces. So this is currently happening. There is geolocation location of Ukrainian forces at uh, Kalivka getting hit by the Russian forces. So, so this could be reinforcements that uh, have gathered into this area here. They are trying to storm out uh, to help out in the defense and they are got strike by Russian forces. So this could be something that had happened uh, around this area here. So we move further up north. Uh, over at this uh, Semenivka region is super complicated. So uh, let me go through a bit. Fighting at Umanske is usual. There's nothing much to talk about. Over at Semenivka, the on the 28th, the fighting is reported at Semenivka. And uh, however, in the morning report of the Semenivka, uh, of, of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry, they say that the fighting is now west of Semenivka, which means that they already acknowledge that the Russians have pushed out from Semenivka already. The Ukrainian counterattack was reported to uh, in a today's uh, Russian Defense Ministry report. It could be actually more or less the same thing. The Russians are the Russians are defending against Ukrainian counterattack as the Russians are pushing out. The Ukrainians are also uh, counterattacking over at Bedaichi over the two days. So. So it could be that the, the, the Ukrainians are actually trying to uh, push back in a strong, a strong response. Uh, but however, the Russian Defense Ministry in today's report uh, confirmed that they have captured Semenivka or Semyonovka so, uh, in Russian. So it's, it's Semyonovka in Russian. So this, is, uh, this comes after... Uh, the capture was actually first reported by the both Russian and Ukrainian sources around three days ago, two days ago. So this is uh, two, three days ago. So this is the situation around here. And in fact, the situation has uh, developed to the point where we are now seeing reports of fighting over by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. They say that the fighting is now at uh, Novo Persha, uh, no Novo Selivka Persha over at Novo Porovsky as well as Sokyu. All these are coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. It's not Russian. These are Ukrainian propaganda, uh, saying that the Russians are actually m pushing out in these directions, and uh, this is the reality of the situation right now. Even the Ukrainian Defense Ministry can't cover the extent of the frontline changes that they are really calling out all these things because uh there is uh the, the I know some pro Russians don't don't believe the Ukrainian Defense Ministry report but you have to understand on the side of the Ukrainians if the Ukrainian Defense Ministry put out fake information uh, that is too far from the reality these reports are being read by the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground so. If the Ukrainian soldiers on the ground, they are fighting around this area here, uh, maybe they are at Novoporovsky and they are already under attack. And then if the reports are still talking about, you no, know, they are defending at Badaichi, they are clearly will be feeling a bit pissed off. Like, you know, like, or they are, they are situated at Novoselivska, Persia, and then the Russians are already nearby. And then they are still talking about Semenivka. You know, they will get pissed off. You know, that kind of thing. So the, it is not viable for the Ukrainian Defense Ministry to lie or at least lie too much. So this is something to note. Uh, there is still fighting being reported at Novo Uh This is reported on the 28th. But how, uh, so, so, so these are all part of the reports. And uh, the, the fact that they, they mentioned Sokyu and Soloviove all at the same time could suggest that the Russians are making a bigger push from Ocheretine while the Russians are still trying to push out from Soloviove. So this, this could be a possibility that this push is actually a bit more advanced. Uh, similarly, we are seeing from uh, Soloviove heading towards Novoprovsky. And uh, maybe this, this break from Medaichi might be bigger than the one at Semenivka. This, it could be a possibility because we have the fighting report as uh, Semenivka and then they go towards west of Semenivka. So the advance from this uh, nor northern part might be actually bigger uh, than the one in the south. So, so which, which this is how I can rationalize why you know, there's this report. So, fighting reported at Novo Alessandrovka is reported by the Russian Defense Ministry and Deep State UA and Kalinove by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. It's interesting to, they, they mentioned Kalinove, uh, while pre, uh, they also mentioned uh, Akanhelsky. So, this is a bit more harder to, uh, to explain. How did the Russians attack uh, Kalino, uh, Kalinove and Akanhelsky at the same time? You know, they you can only attack one of them so it's a bit weird i think they are not entirely sure what is happening right now or it could be the case that the russians have advanced further from karami towards kalinove and uh, this is something that is unreported in our frontline changes so 
that could explain why uh, both settlement is being mentioned. So this is something to note. And uh, so the Russians are also you know, uh, have also expanded their control over at uh, Soloviove as well as uh, Ocharitine. I, I need to amend this map later because uh, this is geolocated. However, this is a Russian claim. So maybe you know, this part will become a confirmed capture. The below will still remain as a claim. So this will do, I will do the changes later. And uh, so geolocation of uh, Russian forces getting hit uh, by the Ukrainians over this location. So the Russians are indeed around here. Uh, it's still there's still no confirmation of full capture of Charitine just yet. So there is all these rumors. You no, know, yeah. So it's important to note while you I know many of you guys watch many YouTube different YouTube channels uh to get your reportings. You no, know, just be careful. Uh don't uh some reports you no know, may be made uh, prematurely by you no know, some of these YouTubers may that may be a bit too excited. So I just want to take note. Novo Bamotivka is also acknowledged to have been captured by the Russian Defense Ministry in yesterday's report. Uh they 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 have confirmed the capture of Novo Bamotivka. This comes very late because the first capture was reported on the 23rd, which is actually one week ago. So the Russian uh, Defense Ministry's report on this capture is very, very late. And uh so the Russians are still trying to push towards uh, Kanhel's gate. Uh, I think no news regarding that. Uh, there is no collaboration about this Russian uh, claim. Uh, fighting is still being reported at Novo Kalinovo and Karamik, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry and Raiba as well. Raiba basically mentioned about cleansing, about you know, they are trying to clean up the settlement. However, this is not entirely acknowledged by the Russian Defense Ministry because they still reported fighting over at Novo Kalinovo. So this is the situation around here. So, um, and uh, further up north, as I mentioned already, Kalinovo, there's a possibility of the Russian already making more advanced in around Karamik region and moving up north. And uh yeah, and uh let me see. Fighting reported at Novo Alexandrivka is a bit weird. Uh maybe this advance there's an advance in this direction towards Novo Alexandrivka, so that's possible. And uh and there's shelling reported at Tarasivka. So this is a uh, reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. Over at the New York front, uh, Ukrainian forces uh, attack at Pivdeni and New York region. Russian forces counterattack at Pivdeni. Uh, at the Pivdeni one, the the Russians actually attack first. Ukrainian counterattack later. So uh, this is because uh, we have the reports from two different days. And we move towards uh, Babmo front. Are you sleepy now? Uh, because I've been talking non-stop for the past 70 minutes. No, no, you drink some coffee, you know. Uh, over at the Bakhmut front, at the Bakhmut front, there is fighting reporter at Klishevka and Andreevka. So that's about it. There's nothing really special about these things. We move to the center part, center part of the Bakhmut front, fighting reporter at Sokil. Uh, there's fighting reporter towards Chasifia, recurring forces counter-attack, Russian forces attack at Ivaniski. So this is a strategic situation. The... There is no uh, developments in this area here. As I mentioned before, this is this to me is an extremely difficult front to fight. So I so I do not really see a point of the Russian pushing this direction. Uh, but no, so we still did not see the advance in this area here. The the focus now is over at the ADFK front, and Ukrainian forces do uh sent in a lot of reinforcement into this front line to hold the line. Uh, so which is also why there might be no, actually no advance in this area here. So we move on further up north, there is fighting reporter at Rykorivka, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. So, but that's about it. It could be a one-off. The last report of this fighting is over on, on the 11th of March. So this could be a, just a one-off thing. Uh, we move further to the Sivas front. At the Sivas front, uh, there is fighting reporter at Vakan Okanyamsky as well as towards Vimka. And uh, there is some there's a joint location of uh, Ukrainian forces getting hit by uh, rocket artillery over at Serebyanka. And that's about it from this front line. Over at the Kremina front, uh, there is there is quite a number of things. Let me I have to zoom out. Okay, Russian forces attacking towards Krykorivka, they're attacking towards to uh through Ser the Serebyanske forestry, attacking towards through uh, Dibrova, towards Terny, towards Nevsky and Makievka. Ukrainian forces are on the defensive in this area here. Joe location uh, of a Lancer hitting the Russian uh, Ukrainian um, MLRS is reported just off Liman. So this is the situation over at the Kremlin front. Uh, despite all these attacks, we're not sure how 
uh, whether this is actually a full scale offensive, but it's looking very very serious serious right now. And uh, the system, the same uh question is now being poised uh over in the Svetove front as well because the Russians are now pushing over at Berestove, uh, Stemekivka, towards Kopanki, Novo Sahievka. Uh, and of course, this is just now the Makievka region. And the uh, Ukrainian forces are counter-attacking at, no at Novosilivsky and Stemakivka. And the Kopanki and Novosilivsky has is now a second day going. Uh, at, at least for the Kopanki, second, second day. Novosilivsky, there, there's a previous attack on the 17th. We might be witnessing a new operation, a new offensive operation right now over at the Svetobe, Kremina and Kupian's front. This is what i think is currently you no know, might be developing and uh over on the kupians front uh there is fighting reporter at sinkivka towards petropolivka there is fighting reporter at kaislivka and uh, berestobe was mentioned just now and uh over at kaislivka there is developments uh, after russians have taken most of the eastern part they continue to expand their control they have now taken more than 50 percent of the settlement ukrainian forces reportedly have retreated towards kotia rivka so this this development uh is a sign that this offensive you know over at, from the Kupians all the way to the criminal front might be serious so and so this if i zoom out the the towards the entire front line oh this is a bit too long too big okay uh, let's say here okay we have sinkivka petropolivka we have kaislivka uh what is this uh this is Beratove. And Novo Selivsky, Semekivka, then the, there is this two, it's called uh, Kopanki and uh, Novo Sehievka, and Makievka, Nevelsky, Terni, Dibrova, Serbianski Forest Tree. Do you see what I see? No, it is a massive big arrow offensive right now throughout the entire front, the entire Luhansk Kharkiv uh, border. So this might be serious of course we have seen this before something like this before but the ukrainian forces then and the russian forces then one year ago is not the ukrainian and russian forces today which is why you know this could mean very very different thing so uh is so we have to keep a close eye because this might develop into a new massive offensive operation which might allow the russians to eventually capture the entire uh eastern eastern bank of the Oski river and uh everything uh, on the eastern part of the Sivinsky donetsk river so this is a very very serious situation that is developing over at this area here yeah is it Oski river yeah this is correct Oski river so we move into the khaki front at the khaki front uh, there is uh there is a lancet hit on the U ukrainian artillery system uh, over at this area of uh, Slobozansky. And uh, at Kharkiv itself, there's a Russian missile strike being reported. And uh, that's about it over at the Kharkiv front. Uh, there is a lot of talk. You know, I know some other channels are talking about Kharkiv offensive or not. So, no, uh, I, I have talked uh, extensively over in the DPA open mic. And I, I'm going to repeat again. There is no reason for the Russians to do it. Uh, it would just it is there's no there's no need for the Russians to do it because the U the West is still supplying weapons, uh, to Ukraine, until the Western uh, support and aid dries up. I don't expect the Russians to open new fronts because every new front you open, you are just creating more vulnerable. Uh, more vulnerability for yourself as well. The Ukrainians cannot attack into the Russian territory because they are limited by the by the Western side. If, even they tried at the Belgorod offensive, that has failed massively. So the Russians have no reason to need to do it because the aim is demilitarization. Doing a slow grind in the established front lines is enough to draw all the Ukrainian uh, military to get demilitarized at the front lines. So there's no need to quickly capture new grounds in the new front line because it's not the time yet. When the And we already see the result of the Ukrainian forces do not have uh, enough munition and equipments allowing the Russians making quick progress. So now imagine, imagine the scenario where the West totally give up on Ukraine. So this, I believe, is the scenario that uh, Putin and... Uh, the Russian uh, side is waiting for, and they're waiting for the total seizure or total seize, seizing of uh, supplies of anything to Ukraine. 
And when that happens, that's when you're going to see the Russians really go into a mass offensive across all fronts. They're going to launch an attack in the Shenanhiv, Shumi, Kharkiv in the repeat of the beginning of the war. They're going to see the massive attack through Luhansk. The, they will try to capture the entire Donetsk. They're going to push up the rest of Zaporizhia. They're going to cross the river at Kherson. And uh, they're going to attack from through Mykolaiv towards Odessa. And then uh, they're going to pincer Dnipro, hit towards uh, pr pr uh, all these other regions I can't really pronounce. And then they will push down to Oto uh, Potova and then go along all the, Dnip the entire Dnipro river and capture most, at least half of Ukraine. So, but for this to happen, the West have to stop supplying stuff. And uh, if you're pro-Ukraine, then you have to continue to ask to, uh, to sacrifice your country to give more stuff to Ukraine. Uh, the If not, the Russians are not going to launch to, uh, to open up the Kharkiv offensive. It's just not worth it. Because uh, if you open up right now, you are just uh, you know, triggering the West into no... Ignore, uh, you're corroborating uh, the claims that Russia is you no know, trying to conquer the rest of Europe. So the idea is just to bore the hell out of the West to make them give up. So that's about it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Do press the like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next update.